Welcome back. There is only one standard projection of the pelvis, which is the AP pelvic projection, used to evaluate not only processes in the lumbosacral junction, but the femoral acetabular region as well. Let's go through some basic anatomy. Here are the iliac crests. Now, my apologies for this radiograph. We are slightly overexposed in the periphery, and the full orientation of the iliac crest cannot be appreciated. However, we can visualize the structures that we're trying to see. Here is the superior iliac spine. Here is the anterior inferior iliac spine. Here is the sacral ala. And here is the posterior superior iliac spine. I'm just going to make my marker a little bit bigger. And and the posterior inferior iliac spine. Now let's visualize that on the other side. Posterior superior, excuse me, posterior superior iliac spine, and here is the posterior inferior iliac spine. Now the ischial spines will be visualized just medial to the femoral acetabular joints. You don't see it that well on the patient's left side, but the right side is seen relatively well. Ischial tuberosity, this area here, superior pubic ramus, inferior pubic ramus and this is the pubic body. Pubic bodies come together to make the pubic symphysis. Here are the obturator foramen which are bordered by the inferior and superior pubic rami along with the most medial portion of the ischium. Kohler's teardrop. Here is Kohler's teardrop. Sometimes you see it written as teardrop of Kohler and this region is the medial most portion of the acetabulum. Now the reason why Kohler's teardrop is so important is that if the femur axially migrates and axial direction will be this direction, the femoral head will begin to push or protrude the acetabulum, here's the acetabulum, through the pelvic floor. At this point, you will lose Kohler's teardrop. Now, this axial migration of the femur can happen with several conditions, including bone softening conditions such as Paget's disease, such as osteomalacia or rickets, but it can also occur secondary to inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid arthritis. So, this Kohler's teardrop should be seen. If you do not see Kohler's teardrop, that is problematic and this finding needs to be investigated. Now back to our anatomy. I'm just going to clean up our screen a little bit here. Now let's continue with the acetabulum. Now remember that the acetabulum is a socket and it's a three-dimensional structure and we're seeing this on a two-dimensional medium. Here's the margin of the acetabulum medially and anteriorly. Here's the posterior margin of the acetabulum. So as you can see, it's a very cupped like structure. Now just to stay in the region, of course this is the femoral acetabular joint. We assess three portions of the femoral acetabular joint. Here's the superior most portion. This is the area that's prone to joint space narrowing secondary to degeneration because it is the weight bearing portion. Here's the axial portion of the femoral acetabular joint and here's the medial portion of the femoral acetabular joint. Now it's important to remember that this is a circular joint and that during regular degeneration we should only be narrowing the superior most aspect. Whenever you have conferential narrowing of the femoral acetabular joint, this is problematic. It can be indicative of inflammatory arthritis, again like rheumatoid arthritis, but it can also be indicative of more serious conditions like infection. When we get to our pathology tutorials, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now this patient, you can see a faint epiphyseal scar. Notice this slight linear radial opacity. This is where the growth plate used to be open. It's normal to have a slight remnant of that scar. This particular patient has a small bone island here in their femoral head and again this is an incidental finding. Now continuing on with the femur. Here's the fovea capitis in this region and you can see it very well once I take some of these marks away but this is the insertion point for the ligament of teres. Let's continue on with the femoral neck. Here's the femoral neck. This region is very important to look closely at because this is the most common location for uh, femoral fractures specifically in older patients, femoral neck fractures are quite common. And this region is all the femoral neck. Of course, the round portion is the femoral head. Here's the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, which we don't see very well, but the region connecting them is the intertrochanteric line or intertrochanteric crest. Let's 
move back up to the more superior structures here, making our way back to the sacrum. Here's the sacral base. Above that will be the lumbosacral joint where the L5-S1 disc space lives. Now remember that this is also a transitional area and therefore anomalies can occur in this region. The most common anomaly of which will be a lumbosacral transitional segment, which means that the last non-rib bearing segment or even the first sacral segment may have characteristics more mimicking the adjacent region. This is important to identify as these segments can be partially fused and therefore no movement is expected to happen at those locations. The AP view combined with a AP or PA lumbosacral spot projection will really help. Now remember that the position of the L5 vertebral body is going to be slightly inferior in this region and that's purely because on a lateral projection the L5 vertebral segment is uh, more downly oriented. I'm just going to draw you a little depiction of a lateral lumbar projection here. And here's L1, 2, and 3. Here's L4. And then L5 is usually very much downwardly tilted. And so when we do a pure A to P projection, we don't typically see L5 body very well. The purpose of the lumbosacral spot projection is to tilt the tube to roughly 25 to 35 degrees in an AP projection and really see through that disc space as well as the structure surrounding the L5 and, and S1 segments. So when we come back to our AP projection of the pelvis, you do see the lower lumbar spine. Notice that we can see the posterior arch very well here, our lamina, spinous processes, but we don't see the body extremely well. And so this is the purpose of taking these angulated spot projections to see this region. Now just to continue on with our anatomy, here's the sacroiliac joints. I want to draw your attention to the fact that we see a portion of the joint here and we see a portion of the joint here. Now this is important to understand. I'm just going to draw you again a bird's eye view. Here's one iliac crest, here's the other iliac crest, and here's the sacrum. Okay, and we're looking from above down with this being the sacroiliac joint. Now this is a very angulated joint, right? And in the AP perspective, we're not going to see directly through the joint. What we end up seeing is the front most margin or anterior most margin and the posterior most margin. Now if we draw a midline division here, you'll notice that the posterior portion of the SI joint is much more close to midline. And so when we come back up to our SI joint here, we'll notice that this portion of the SI joint is more medial and therefore representing the posterior portion of the sacroiliac joint. And this lucency here is much more lateral and this is representing the anterior portion of the sacroiliac joint. And so when you're looking at these SI joints, you will often see these two conspicuous regions of joint space and you'll know exactly why you're seeing that. Here are some sacral foramina. Notice that these are almond shaped and here's some more down here and these represent anterior sacral foramina. Here's one example of a posterior sacral foramina which is more circular in nature and more P shaped. Now this whole region is considered the pelvic inlet. Basically you should have a nice smooth curvilinear margin to this region. You should have none of the femoral acetabular joint visualized within this region or any other conspicuous structures. Now if the patient's bladder is full sometimes you can see slight opacity to the pelvic floor and this region is in the region of the bladder. Also small concretions may be seen not present in this case I'm just drawing you a few but if you see little small round calcifications these are typically phleboliths p-h-l-e-b you know very well pertains to the venous system and these are small calcifications in the pelvic venous plexus and our incidental findings. I think we have covered all of our anatomy and again I hope this tutorial was very very useful for you.